Last December, I made a video where I molded little miniature hands. Well, I filled those molds with wax, but when I pulled out the hands, they were missing fingers. So today I'm going to explain why this happens and how to prevent the problem from occurring using some good mold making skills. Chasing wax is always an interesting challenge because it takes almost as much skill as it does just to sculpt the sculpture, let alone mold it and then reproduce it in wax if you want to cast in metal. So as you can see here, I heated up the wax, and just so you know, I'm walking you through what I did from the beginning. So I heated up the wax and uh, poured it into those little molds. Remember I molded those little tiny miniature hands? Well, those were really tricky because they were so small that when I poured that wax in there, they were getting air pockets stuck right where the fingers start. So it was really frustrating because I would pull them out of the mold, really carefully of course, and sometimes they'd look pretty good but they'd be missing like the tip of a finger and then I'd have to go back and repair that. You know, so it took a lot of time. I would just make little balls of wax and I'd take my soldering iron, check out my video on that if you haven't yet, I'd kind of melt it on there and re-sculpt the fingers. No matter how good your mold is, you have to chase the wax, so to speak where you have to fix all the imperfections and hide any lines that you might see from the different parts of the mold. I'm just preparing the wax for metal because it's all going to be cast and everything will be permanent after that. But the problem got worse. Fortunately though, there is a way to prevent this. I'm going to show you that here in a second. First I want to show just a few more clips on how I repaired those fingers because even if you're not trying to do this at home, I think it's good for everyone to understand all the work that goes into casting in bronze metal. You can see I just layered on little pieces of wax. That soldering iron would melt the wax instantly, and I just slowly build up the fingers. Here's where I start creating my sprues or air channels. Actually, the sprues are usually the uh, channels that deliver metal or wax through a shell or mold to the object or the uh, shape of the object, the cavity that makes up that inside. Now I really don't know what I do without this soldering iron because it just makes it so easy where I can roll up little tubes of wax and remember that those will leave a cavity that creates a channel for wax to travel through or air to come out of. But it's just so easy with the soldering iron because I just barely tap that point of contact and then they're instantly connected because the little pieces just melt together then they harden pretty quickly and then as you can see I have an air channel for every little finger and that way the wax can escape out those air channels pushing out the air and then I won't have those nasty air pockets that will just leave me with a hand that has its fingers cut off <laughs> Now speaking of having your fingers cut off, I'll show you here in a minute how that can be a problem too. But first, watch this as I create those little boxes, then I have a mold sitting next to them so you understand that those are going to be filled up with the rubber that I'm about to mix here. And it's just a two-part silicon mold. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, this stuff is a little pricey just to warn you. As you can see, I mix the two parts together, and they have to be evenly distributed. Uh, the mixing can take a little bit of elbow grease and effort too, because you want to make sure that that's mixed well. Um, you don't want any sticky or runny parts of the mold that might disintegrate. Also be very careful if you are molding at home. As you can see, I use a very light touch. Of course this is sped up, so the video footage is going to make it look like I'm pouring this a lot faster than I really am. But I don't want to just pour it all on top of those little tiny sprues all at once because I don't want to crush them. I always let the rubber sit for at least 24 hours before I come back and cut open those little boxes that I made out of cardboard and duct tape. The little industrial razors that I'm using in this video those are very handy to have. Um, I'll talk more about those here in a minute too. 
So as you can see, there are almost perfect little squares of rubber that come out. And keep in mind that the sculptures are inside, so now I have to cut them out. And I have to be really careful because I need to think about how I'm cutting into this rubber. Because I don't want to cut too much that I ruin my little mold. These things are so tiny too that that makes it way more challenging than it would be if it were a larger piece. Larger pieces are usually molded in different sections and then you fit them back together. And uh, yeah, so we have a busted finger there. I'm just going to speed it up so you can see that I'm taking a little bit of time to just carefully cut out all those little sprues. The sprues are the air channels, just to uh, reiterate that point there. Um, these razors here, I slowed that down so you could see. Those are the industrial razors that are disposable. I usually buy a pack of them and, uh, you know, once one gets dull, I just throw it away and then I open up a new one. So check those out if you want. Just be really careful if you use them. I, just, I don't even put them in a little tool. I just use them as they are. So once that's done, you'll see here that we have an air channel. Then I have this funnel in the middle, and that will be where the wax pours into the shape of the hand. This one doesn't have a funnel yet because I haven't cut it out. So as you can see, I take this little razor, and I'll just very carefully cut a funnel. And that funnel, of course, is what I will pour the hot wax into. Thus, it will fill the cavity, leaving a wax hand inside. And then hopefully the air will escape through those little channels on each side. I have to be very careful here, too, because I don't want to take too much away. Just a little bit so that the wax can easily flow inside that. At this point, I'm almost ready for the moment of truth to see if this actually works. I'm really happy to make this video though because I want to show you how much work and time goes into casting in bronze, even in the little pieces. I use this masking tape to hold that rubber together so I can decrease the amount of seams I might have. I heat up my wax, yes there was a fox in there, and then I place the molds next to each other because there will be a little bit of spillage. Then I just carefully pour that wax inside. If it's too hot, it will blister on the surface. If it's too cold, that will create more air pockets to deal with. So I heated it to 180 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Then once I fill all those molds up, I may pour a little bit extra wax inside those sprues or air channels if they didn't already fill up. Then of course I let the wax cool. And now it's time to see if those little air channels, aka sprues, worked to deliver air and wax to where it needed to go. Ah yes, there it is. Beautiful. I was so impressed that it actually worked because these fingers are so tiny. One of those fingers was a little bit deformed, but that's because of the mold. Not because of those air channels. Those worked out perfect. This one worked out awesome too. Uh, last time that wouldn't have happened, I would have been missing probably both of those fingers, if not at least half. And all it comes down to is those little air channels, which we call sprues, because you want to deliver the wax to where it needs to go. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel, because right now I'm putting out a new video every week. Check out my website too, fritzhoppybronze.com if you want to see more on this process and you can see the finished product of some beautiful bronze sculptures. Thanks again for watching. I will see you all next Thursday.